Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocketnow.com. If you're looking for an Android 2.3 smartphone that's super thin and that has a really fantastic screen, you can't beat the Sony Ericsson Xperia Arc and the Samsung Galaxy S2. In this video, we're going to compare them. Let's get to it. Okay, so a lot to get in here. We're going to talk about specs. We're going to talk about hardware, software, web browsing performance, benchmarks, price and availability, and a lot more so you can determine which of these super thin devices with really great screens is right for you. So let's start off with the Samsung Galaxy S2. You probably know the specs uh, by heart now. We cover it a lot, certainly. Uh, we've got the dual core Exynos processor, 1.2 gigahertz. We've also got a full gigabyte of RAM, 16 gigabytes of storage, or 32 gigabytes, although that model isn't really shipping right now. You can buy one of these unlocked for about $635 now. Both of these devices are very expensive because they're not on, the ca on a carrier in the US, but around the world, in Europe especially, you can get uh, both of these phones at a lower subsidized price. So that is the Samsung Galaxy S2. Uh, we've got a 4.3 inch display. The resolution is WVGA, which is 800 down by 480 across. Really the most common resolution these days. The Sony Ericsson Xperia Arc has quite a different spec sheet. It has a single core one gigahertz Snapdragon processor. Uh, the mighty Snapdragon, we've seen this CPU, uh, in many, many devices. It's a strong performer, not as strong as the Exynos as we're going to see. It's got 512 megabytes of RAM, and in terms of storage, has one gigabyte on board, although there is a micro SD slot uh, also with this device. Now, we can buy this, or you can buy this, anyone can buy this, for about $600. In some cases, cheaper, around 500 bucks unlocked uh, if you search online for it. Again, this phone is not available in the US on a carrier right now. It might go to AT&T. We're not sure about that yet but definitely unlocked and around the world, in, in, especially in Europe, you can get this at a lower subsidized price. Now let's talk about hardware, and by the way, uh, the screen on the Xperia Arc is a little bit smaller than on the Galaxy S2, 4.2 inches instead of 4.3 inches. The resolution is slightly greater, it's FWVGA, so that is 854 down, you get extra 54 pixels, by 480. Neither of these devices have the newer stock of QHD screens that go all the way to 960 by 540, but that's okay. There's not that big of a difference between WVGA um, or FWVGA in the case of the Xperia Arc and the higher QHD display. Now, I mentioned that both of these devices are thin, and wow, they are thin. Uh, let's look at them individually and see how the thinness is pulled off. On the Galaxy S2, we've got a very thin bezel. It's very close to eight millimeters. And then we've got a thicker part down here, which probably adds about another millimeter, maybe a millimeter and a half. Uh, but most of the device is very thin. The Xperia Arc is a really interesting design. It's got that arc design. Uh, in the center, at its thinnest point, it gets very close to the eight millimeters, although not quite, uh, that you find on the Galaxy S2. And then it's thicker, probably around 10 millimeters, a little bit more than 10 millimeters at the thickest parts. But in hand, the Xperia Xperia Arc feels super thin, as does uh, the Galaxy S2. In terms of fit and finish, both of these devices feel very high quality in hand. I think you'll notice that it, with the Xperia Arc, it feels a little bit more slippery uh, because we got we have the shiny plastic on the back, whereas on the Galaxy S2, we've got this sort of texture that doesn't pick up fingerprints unless you've got a lot of them on there. Uh, but definitely the Xperia Arc picks up fingerprints. Although you have this really cool design on the Xperia Arc, hopefully you can see it. It's kind of white down here, or at least a grayish color, and up here it's black. So you get this cool fade down to black. Now in terms of cameras, both of them have 8 megapixel cameras. Uh, you get 720p video capture on the Arc, 1080p video capture on the Samsung Galaxy S2. Uh, the Arc can actually do HDMI out, which is kind of rare these days. Uh, so here's the adapter at the top, and it's a micro-sized adapter, so you have to get a special cable for that to work. You can do uh, video out on the Samsung Galaxy S2, but you have to get a special adapter, a special USB plug. You have to go and buy something separate, although I guess the same can be said about the Xperia Arc since most people don't have a Type-D connector laying around the house. So let's turn both of these devices on. We're going to test boot up time. Let's find the power button. It's on the side on the Galaxy S2. It's on the top on the Arc. Press and hold. And they both should be off. I felt them both vibrate. Yep. 
And the boot up test is not particularly relevant because most people leave their phones on all the time, but some people still turn them off at night. So this actually matters so that you can lower the time between when you turn on your phone, you can check your email and operate the, the device. Okay, so we got a picture first from the Galaxy S2 and we'll let that sort of settle down. Media scanner running, of course. We'll wait till the media scanner is finished. Okay, it's finished on the Galaxy S2. Preparing SD card, sort of the same kind of deal here. We're going to zoom in on the screen to get a better viewing angle here. Okay, we're done. So the Galaxy S2 is quicker. Now we're going to go into settings. Wow, is that a little freeze? <laughs> Force close. Oh, that's a great first impression there. Uh, we're going to go into settings to determine which one has more... All right, we've got a text message there. We're going to go into settings to determine which has more um, RAM right now. Just we, we started both devices up. We're not running at any applications except for the ones that are running in the background. We're going to go to running services here. And we can take a look at RAM. Uh, we've got 113 used on the Arc, a little bit more on the Galaxy S2, 608 megabytes free on the Galaxy S2, 207 megabytes free on the Arc. So three times more the amount of RAM free on the, uh, the uh, Samsung Galaxy S2, which doesn't always tell the story, because Android's very good at managing program memory. And unless you're running many games at the same time, which you can't even do anyway, uh, it's, it's going to be hard to use 600 megabytes of, of RAM in day-to-day -day usage. Okay, let's go back to the home screen and talk about the software. First, let's talk quickly about the Galaxy S2. Of course, we've got Samsung's proprietary interface here, which they call TouchWiz. We've got a variety of widgets here, screens. We can customize them. We can pinch out and get this sort of zoomed out view and add multiple home screens if we want. These widgets are nice. They're not the most amazing widgets. Uh, what's cool is Samsung has added a new way uh, to add widgets. So we can actually add them with this little interactive thing. We slide around. It kind of makes it easier to see your widgets. If we go into the application tray, this is all customizable. You get a sort of iPhone-esque way of looking at your applications. And we can go to a list view if we want, back to grid view, and we can go to edit. And this allows us to move around icons and kind of customize them. You can even customize the dock, add a folder, and so on and so forth. And this interface is present throughout all applications. So in the browser, in email, in calendar, in context, it's all there. Very nice interface that makes uh, the home screens look at least visually pleasing. And let's take a look at the interface on the Sony Ericsson Xperia Arc. Sony Ericsson has gone with a less animated um, interface here than they did back with the X10 and other devices that really flaunted the Timescape Mediascape thing. You still get elements of the Timescape Mediascape. In fact, if you go into the application tray, uh, this still exists where you can flip through in a very 3D environment your Twitter updates, your Facebook updates, your text messages, your contacts, and your emails. Some people like this, but some people think it's way too too visually intense, um, but for those that want something more simple, here you have a choice of multiple home screens. You can swipe through. Uh, you can add widgets to them, obviously. You don't get a fancy interface like you get on the Galaxy S2 to add widgets, but this will look very familiar to most people. There aren't that many added widgets from Sony Ericsson, just you know this Timescape one. You also have this way of flicking through uh, your YouTube videos or your the videos that are on your phone in a 3D environment. and. You've got a clock, a lot of basic stuff. Again, quick shortcuts to your music, to your photos, and to your videos from there. If we dive into the program tray over here, uh, we get this iPhone-esque uh, layout, just like you get on the Galaxy S2. So we can flick through. We can tap this button in the bottom right corner. The icons will jiggle, again, like the iPhone. You can move them around on the screen, customize them. They all set to a grid in the upper left corner, again, like the iPhone, like the Galaxy S2. We can swipe to the right. We can customize, add more panels if we want. When we're done, we hit this button, or we can change the listing order. So we can make them alphabetical, most used, recently installed, and so on and so forth. So so very simple in terms of how Sony Ericsson has put forth this interface. Uh, it's almost close to stock, uh, more so than the Galaxy S2 at least. And we're going to run some benchmark tests in Quadrant Standard between the Galaxy S2 and the Sony Ericsson Xperia Arc. We're going to jump right to the results. And the results are in, and if you measure up the Sony Ericsson Xperia Arc against other single core phones, it really does a really great job. I mean, it's 1,375, which is a very, very strong score, again, for a single core uh, device. 
But we're seeing 3200 here on the Galaxy S2. If you, if you benchmark any dual-core Android phone, you're going to get benchmarks that are off the charts. So we're not even going to proceed with other benchmarks. Obviously, a dual-core phone is going to be faster uh, than a single-core phone. But of the uh, single-core phones, the Arc is one of the fastest. And remember that this device, the Arc, is $100, in some cases more than $100 cheaper than the Galaxy S2. So you might be losing a little bit of speed, but it's potentially a, a really good value. So let's open up the web browser and see how they compare in terms of web browsing speed. OK, here we are. I'm going to open up the browser. We've got plugins turned to on demand, so it shouldn't load any um, shouldn't be loading any flash content. We've got both devices on Wi-Fi. We're going to go to Pocket now on both. Let's see which one gets there faster. And you can really see the difference in the screens right now. So more contrast is found on the Galaxy S2. Uh, the Xperia Arc has that Bravia engine. And a lot of people think that the colors are just unbelievably real on the Xperia Arc. And as we flip through and do a comparison, you're going to see uh, that in action. The colors are just really, really good on the Xperia Arc. Contrast, definitely the best on the Galaxy S2, thanks to the Super AMOLED Plus display. And they're off, and actually, the Arc is beating the Galaxy S2. Okay, while they're loading, let's flick down the page. Both of them can keep up with a flick while the page is loading without getting everything into program memory. Wow, the Arc beat the Galaxy S2. It's doing something, and it stopped. Okay, we'll let the Galaxy S2 finish. All right, and we're done. We can scroll down the page on both. A little bit choppy on the Xperia Arc. Uh, let's zoom in, see what it's like. Very smooth on both. I'd say a little bit, uh, a little bit more choppy here uh, on the Arc. Let's click on this link here, and we'll tap. Both are very, very capable. OK, and the Galaxy S finished a little bit faster than the Arc. But the, again, the Arc is doing a great job at keeping up with the Galaxy S2. We've tested a lot of phones against the Galaxy S2. And in almost every case, it wins. So we're, we're, we're happy to see a phone keep up. So again, we can scroll down the page. Let's go to a more complex web page. We'll go to Engadget, which is very long and scrollable. Uh, so we can see really how the, the, the GPU and the CPU performs. OK, we've got Engadget loaded on both. We're going to scroll to the bottom directly and just go to the desktop version so we can see the most graphic, intense uh, rendition of this website. So they're off, and let's see which one gets to the site first. Galaxy S has a head start there and loading the, the top page elements. Here comes the arc. I feel like this is some sort of horse race. Let's flick down the page while they're loading. No checkerboards on either, which is fantastic. Let's do screen rate rotation speed test uh, while they're loading. OK, Galaxy S2 there. Galaxy S2 there. I just took the camera off the tripod so you can see the viewing angle. It's very, very wide on both devices. Um, but when you get to a really extreme viewing angle, on the Galaxy S2, you can see the screen a little bit better, whereas it's becoming kind of inverted. The screens keep timing out. A little bit inverted on the, on the arc. OK, and both have finished loading. We can scroll down the page. They're both pretty smooth. Again, the arc is a little bit choppy when it comes to scrolling down the page. It's hard to beat the Galaxy S2. Uh, but in terms of page render times, the, the arc really can keep up, not necessarily beating uh, the, X, the Galaxy S2, but certainly almost matching its speed. So right now, we just clicked on another link. We'll see where this takes us, and then we'll wrap up the, the web browser speed test here. OK, and the Galaxy S2 finished. It looks like we jumped down to the comments. But here we are at the top. So Sony Xperia Arc, definitely no slouch when it comes to web browsing. 
So at the end of the day, the Galaxy S2 is definitely the better device here. Uh, if you just look at the facts, I mean, it browses the web faster, it, it loads faster, there's more RAM available. Uh, but in terms of value, the Xperia Arc might be the value in Android right now. It's fast, it's beautiful, it's thin, it's light. And it can really keep up in a lot of ways in terms of web browsing uh, to, to the Galaxy S2. So if you're looking to save 100 or 150 bucks, which is a lot, the Arc is a great choice still. And you can get the Arc uh, in a version that is AT&T capable. And we'll post a link on how to get that particular version. In Europe, they're already selling it. They've been selling it for a while. But you can import it into the US, use it on AT&T if you want as an unlocked phone. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And thank you very much for watching. That's it for now.